we are doing two important literary figures one is a playwright and the other is a novelist even though both are multi-faceted personalities both of them are many-sided personalities one is a famous dramatist and other is known as a famous novelist First of all, we are taking into account the dramatist or playwright Oscar Wilde O-S-C-A-R-W-I-L-D Oscar Wilde Yes, let us start Oscar Wilde was born on 16th October 1854 at Westland Road, Dublin in Ireland Oscar Wilde was born on 16th October 1854 at Westland Road, Dublin, the capital city of Ireland, Dublin in Ireland. He is one of the most significant writers of late Victorian period. He is one of the most important, significant, or famous, well known writers of late Victorian period, the second half of the Victorian period. His father, William Wilde, was an extremely busy man and had very little time to look after his family and his children. William Wilde and his wife, Jane Francisca. Jane Francisca. William Wilde and his wife, Jane Francisca, had three children. Two boys and a girl. Among them, the eldest, Willie Wilde, was born in 1853. Among these children, the eldest child, Willie Wilde, Willie Wilde, W-I-L-L-I-E, Willie Wilde, was born in 1853. One year later, that is in 1854, was born Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was born. Oscar's birth was somewhat a disappointment to his mother. Why was he ill at the time of his birth? Oscar's birth was somewhat a disappointment to his mother. The reason was she had been longing for a girl. Actually, the mother had been longing for a girl child. So the arrival of the arrival of a son disappointed her. Actually, the lady uh, Jane Francisca was longing, desiring to have a girl. However, two years later, after two years, her wish was fulfilled by the arrival of a daughter who was named Isola, I-S-O-L-A, Isola. But unfortunately, the girl died after a short illness, after a brief illness, the girl child died at the age of 10. Isola's death deeply affected Oscar Wilde. Sister's death very deeply affected Oscar Wilde. Oscar's school life was not very distinguished. It was not a colorful one. Anyhow, at the age of 17, he won an entrance scholarship to Trinity College, Dublin. He was able to win a scholarship to join at Trinity College in Dublin. There he remained for three years. At the Trinity College he studied for three years. It was there that he fell under the spell of Professor Mahafi. Professor Mahafi, a great scholar in Greek literature and culture. So while he was at Trinity College at Dublin, he fell, he was under the spell, the magic. He came under the magic influence. He came under the spell of Professor Mahafi, who was a great scholar of Greek literature and culture. Actually, his meeting with Professor Mahafi and his uh, deep attachment with Professor Mahafi became a training point in his life. Oscar Wilde completed his career at Trinity College by winning a scholarship which enabled him to go to Magdalen College, Oxford. He completed his career, studying career at Trinity College by winning a scholarship. 
which enabled him to go to Magdalen College, Oxford. It was in October 1874. That is when he was exactly 20 years. It was in, eight, it was in October 1874 when he was exactly 20 that he went up to the University of Oxford where the seeds of aestheticism, the seeds of Greek aestheticism and the ideals of Greek beauty that had been sown in him by Professor Mahafi began to sprout and flower. In a figurative language we can say at Oxford the seeds of aestheticism and the ideals of Greek beauty aestheticism and the ideals of Greek beauty that had been sown in him. These philosophic these philosophic ideas were sown into him, sown in him by Professor Mahafi at the Trinity College Dublin. And the seeds began to sprout, grow and flower in him while he was at Oxford. At Oxford he also came under the influence of John Ruskin. We did a video about Ruskin earlier. And Walter Pater. At Oxford University he also came under the influence of John Ruskin and Walter Pater. After graduating from Oxford he came to London. He came to the capital city of England, London where he attracted the attention of the public by declaring himself as the professor of aesthetics. He himself declared as the professor of aesthetics while in London. It was a kind of boasting. So, among the public he declared, uh, see, Oscar Wilde declared himself as the professor of aesthetics. He was very proud of himself that he declared himself to be the professor of aesthetics uh, when he reached London after his uh, graduation from Oxford University. So, he attracted the attention of the public by declaring himself as professor of aesthetics wearing long curly locks of hair. Curly locks. He also was very fond of wearing very curly long and curly locks of hair and dressing himself in fancy dress he also wrote eccentric dress sorry he also wore eccentric dress he was also very fond of wearing fancy dress eccentric dress and he further gained the attention of the public by his wit which was used to insult others he used his wit to insult others he used biting wit in order to attack others. Then in 1876, in the year 1876, he began contributing a number of poems, number of poems to literary magazines. By the year 1876, Oscar Wilde began to contribute a number of poems to literary magazines. He also won the New Degate Prize. When he was at Oxford University, he was able to win New Degate Prize. We have uh, earlier found, uh, uh, we found the history of New Degate Prize and so many poets winning this New Degate Prize while studying at Oxford University. Don't you remember? So in 1876, he began contributing a number of poems to literary magazine. He also won the new Degate Prize for his poem called Ravenna R-A-V-E-N-N Ravenna An Italian made Ravenna Ravenna R-A-V-E-N-N Ravenna Early in 1818 Oscar Wilde wrote his first play entitled Vera that centered around the nihilism N-I H-I-L-I-S-M Nihilism means rejection of established religious faith and morality etc. That is what is Nihilism. Rejection of established or existing religious principles and ethics. So in the year 1880 Oscar, Oscar Wilde 
Round is first to play entitled Vera. That is ended round Nihilism in Russia. Nihilism which was in vogue, which was in existence in Russia at that time. At the request of Miss Mary Andersa, Mary Andersa, a famous uh, dramatic actress, New York actress. At the request of Miss Mary Andersa, Mary Andersa, Mary Andersa, a New York actress, Wilde wrote his tragic play, a Wales play, tragic play, The Duchess of Padua, The Duchess of Padua. The tragic play was entitled The Duchess of Padua in blank ways. He wrote the play in blank ways. At the same time, he got an offer to go on a lecture too in America. He also got a chance to go on a lecture tour in America. Uh, at the same time, when he received an offer to write a play, and the play he wrote was a tragic one. Entitled the Duchess of Padua on the request of a famous New York actress, Miss Mary Anderson. Miss Mary Anderson. So the offer to make a lecture tour in America, he readily accepted because uh, it would uh, make him able to get a lot of money. He delivered lectures in about seventy different towns in America. He made uh, speeches or lectures in about 70 different towns in America. Soon after, then coming back, he married Constance Lloyd. Constance Lloyd. He married Constance Lloyd, an Irish author. She was an Irish writer. And he had two sons, Cyril and Vivian. He had two sons, Cyril and Vivian. He edited the journal Women's World. He edited the journal or magazine Women's World. In the year 1888 came his first two volume of stories. You know, Oscar Wilde's first two volume of stories came out in the year 1888. 1888. 1888. Came his first two volume of stories. The Happy Prince and Other Tales. It contains the most beautiful, pathetic, touching story, The Happy Prince. You might have uh, uh, read uh, this story, uh, which would have uh, moved your hearts. The Happy Prince and Other Tales. The next year, that is in 18, 89, next year, he published an essay, The Portrait of Mr. W. H. The essay was entitled The, Port the Portrait of Mr. W. H. Through this essay, he sought to prove that Shakespeare wrote his sonnets for a boy actor, William Hughes, and uh, not of the Earl of Not For, or not of the Earl of Southampton, as uh, many believe. So we all believe that Shakespeare mentioned the, uh, the handsome youth in his sonnets. Shakespeare has uh, written 154 sonnets. And uh, most of the sonnets are addressed to a young and handsome youth and other sonnets to a black lady. And many believe that the young handsome man, handsome youth mentioned in his sonnets is the heir of Southampton. But uh, through the essay, the, the portrait of Mr. W. H. Oscar Wilde tries to prove that Shakespeare wrote about a boy actor. William Hughes, I know the Earl of Southampton. <clears throat> In the year 1891, he produced a book of essays called Intentions. In the year, next year, in the year 1891, he produced a book of essays called uh, Intentions. In the same year, means in the year 1891, he wrote a novel. He was also a novelist. He wrote a novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray. The Picture of Dorian Gray was the title of the novel which he wrote. Then his play Lady Windermere's Fan, Lady Windermere's Fan. 
is a play which uh, ridicules the snobbery which existed in the middle class society. His play Lady Windermere's Fan established him as one of the leading dramatists of the English stage. Lady Windermere's Fan established him as one of the leading dramatists of the English stage and brought him a lot of money also. He was able to get a lot of money from the production of this play, the Lady Windermere's Fan. It was enacted in so many stages uh, which uh, made him rich. Then this play was followed by a woman of no importance, a woman of no importance, which was a theme, which was a good theme. Many critics point out that Lady Windermere's Fan does not have a strong theme of its own. It is in the form of a satire. But you know the a woman of no importance contains a good theme and a number of dramatic situations. And came, soon after came, an ideal husband. Another play by Oscar Wilde, an ideal husband. Wilde wrote the play. Another play, The Importance of Being Ernest. Ernest is the name of the protagonist. The Importance of Being Ernest in the year 1894. Perhaps it is the most significant, uh, significant of his plays, most important of his plays. The Importance of Being Ernest. It was written in the year 1894 which deals with many things like uh, women's education, the inheritance of property, marriage, class distinctions, class differences, the rich and the poor, etc. Class distinctions, baptism, food, money, all these things are dealt with in the play, the importance of being honest. Another play, Salome was banned in England. It was banned in England and produced in Paris. In, it was uh, published and uh, enacted in Paris in the year 1896. Paris, the capital city of France. In the year 1896, it was banned in England. Oscar Wilde was charged with homosexuality by the Marquis of Queensbury. Marquis of Curisbury charged him with uh, homosexuality, gay nature. Wilde was prosecuted on the charges of hom homosexuality. Oscar Wilde was prosecuted on charges of homosexuality and was sentenced to two years rigorous imprisonment, hard imprisonment. He was sentenced to Two years rigorous imprisonment. During the period of imprisonment, he wrote De Profundis. De Profundis, that means, De Profundis means the uh, French title, De Profundis means from the depth of the heart. From the depth of the heart. That is the meaning of the title, De Profundis. It was the uh, book he wrote while he was in imprisonment. It means from the depth of the heart. After his release, Wilde wrote the ballad of reading jail. Jail, the ballad of reading jail, G A O L. G A O L was the old English. The old English of uh, J A I L. The old uh, spelling was G A O L. So after his release, Wilde wrote the ballad of a. A reading jail, an impassioned poem in the year 1898. He, he went for France, he left England and he went for France and never came back to England again. He never came back to England or in Ireland. Oscar Wilde died in dire distress and neglect. Oscar Wilde died in dire, complete, total distress and neglect in the year 1900 at the age of 44 you know he was just 44 at the time of his death he died in dire distress and neglect in the year 1900 at the age of 44 when he was just 44 so this is about Oscar Wilde 
Now let us see the life and verse of the famous novelist. He was also a poet. But uh, he is rather a novelist. We uh, study him as a novelist. D. H. Lawrence. D. H. Lawrence is a noteworthy figure in the literary canon of the 20th century. He is a remarkable literary figure in the 20th century. He is a noteworthy figure in the literary canon of the 20th century. Lawrence is widely known for his novels. But he was also a poet, a short story writer, essayist, critic and a, a travel writer, writer of travelogues. So he was many many things. But he is widely known for his novels. Even though he was a poet, short story writer, essayist, critic and travel writer. He was of course the most outstanding literary figure between the two world wars. D. H. Lawrence is of course the most distinguished, most outstanding, most distinguished literary figure between the two world wars. He had to face a tough opposition. D. H. Lawrence during his lifetime had to face very tough opposition and uh, persecution due to his marriage with the Friday Weekly, F-R-I-D-E, Friday Weekly, a German and his charge of obscenity. Obscenity means uh, writings with obscene scenes, uh, a kind of pornography. Obscenity against his novel Rainbow. Rainbow was charged with obscenity and it was banned in England. So, uh, listen, he had to face a tough opposition and a persecution due to his marriage with the Friday Weekly. Friday Weekly was a German and the charge of obscenity against his novel Rainbow which was published in the year, which was written in the year 1915. The exhibition of his painting was banned by the police. So, in England, his exhibition of his paintings was banned, charging with obscene scenes. His exhibition of paintings was banned by the police. So, circumstances forced him to leave England in the year 1990. So circumstances forced him to leave England in the year 1990. He went to many parts of the world, Italy, Malta, Ceylon, Sri Lanka, United States, Mexico and many other places in search of a society which could suit his unconventional ideals. He was in search of a society, a group of people which would suit which would suit his unconventional ideals. He was quite unconventional. He had unconventional ideas with him. He was in search of, he was in quest of a society or a group of people which would accept his unconventional ideals. So he I traveled around the world. He traveled to various places in the world like Italy, Malta, Ceylon, United States, Mexico and many other places in search of a society which would uh, suit his uncon unconventional ideals. In the year 1929, 1929, he returned to Europe and died of tuberculosis, TB, tuberculosis or consumption at Venice in France, Venice, V-E-N-C-E, Venice in France. He died at the, at the place called Venice in France. He died of tuberculosis or consumption. That was his disease. He died of tuberculosis at Venice in France. Lawrence was one of the most prolific writers of the 20th century. It is true that he is one of the most prolific Able, 
writers of the 20th century. In his 19 years of literary career, he had a literary career of 19 years. In his 19 years of literary career, he produced over 40 volumes of fiction. Fiction means uh, short stories and novels. He produced the 40 volumes, more than 40 volumes. More than uh, 40 volumes or over 40 volumes of fiction, stories and uh, novels, poetry, plays, treatises and essays. He also wrote uh, treatises and uh, essays. We are here mainly concerned with Lawrence as a novelist. We are discussing him here as a novelist only. We are here greatly, deeply concerned with Lawrence as a novelist. We are considering him as a novelist here. First novel, The White Peacock, published in the year 1911, introduces Lawrence's main theme. The novel introduces D.H. Lawrence's main theme, The Unhappy Human Relationship. His main theme in the novel is The Unhappy human relationship especially between man and woman then the trespassers trespassers means those who enter without a permission the trespassers published in the year 1912 the next year 1912 is an insignificant work it was not a successful it was an unimportant work then comes one of the most important works Sons and Lovers Sons and Lovers a famous novel Sons and Lovers published in the year 1913 1913 It is a highly powerful and moving novel which deals with the penetrating insight The novel deals with the penetrating piercing insight of the relationship between son and mother it, uh, the theme is about Oedipus complex, you know that. So, Sons and Lovers, which was published in 1913, is a highly powerful and moving, attractive novel, uh, which deals with the penetrating, piercing insight with the relationship between son and mother. It is an autobiographical novel. A novel with a lot of a lot of autobiography a lot of autobiographical elements in it. It is an autobiographical novel of great artistic merit. The Rainbow, which was published in the year 1915, was banned on obscene scenes. Uh, it is uh, contains a lot of bad scenes about uh, sexuality. So, it was banned and uh, the novel Rainbow deals with a man-woman relationship in true colors. It deals with a man-woman relationship in true colors. True colors. Women in Love, another novel, Women in Love, published in the year 1921, reveals Lawrence's views on, views on life. It uh, reveals Lawrence, it um, uh, shows uh, D.H. Lawrence's views on life. In it, he carried even further researching revelation of the complex relations between men's and women's unconscious minds. In the novel, D.H. Lawrence deals with uh, the complex relationships uh, between men's and women's unconscious minds. He has gone deeper to psychoanalysis. It is highly psychoanalytic in theme. And he finds deep relationship between men's and women's unconscious realms of minds. See, inscrutable are the ways of mind. We cannot find out uh, why the mind is behaving so, why there are such feelings and thoughts in our mind. But it is so. We can't help it. So why I am fascinated with the younger girl? 
why the older um, uh, woman is fascinated with the young boy why all this why all this uh, immorality so that is what he deals uh, in his novel which was banned in england what is the title of the novel the rainbow the rainbow and also the same theme is handled in his uh, next novel women in love women in love which was published in 1921 so in through this novel he searches the complex relationships between men's and women's unconscious minds then the next novel aaron's road aaron's road published in the year 1922 it is a mature work noted for its artistic excellence it is a mature work we can call it a mature work of great artistic excellence we can see great artistic merit in this novel kangaroo published in the year 1923 kangaroo the boy in the bush the boy in the bush published in the year 1924 and the plumed serpent 1926 these novels deal with his experiences in australia and in mexico these novels deals with uh, uh, dh lawrence's experiences some of them are immoral while he was on travel to australia and uh, mexico finally his finest work his uh, greatest work the most famous work lady chatterley's lover remember this title Remember the title Sons and Lovers and Lady Chatterley's Lover. Lady Chatterley's Lover, which was published in the year 1928. 1928. It is an artistic revelation of the deep need of modern men and women to face all the elements of their natures if they were not to live frustrated and uh, incomplete lives. In this novel, Lady Chatterley's Lover, dh lawrence shows that we have to face all the elements of our mind all the feelings and thoughts that arise in our natures in our behavior and in our mind otherwise we will be we will have to live in frustration and uh, our lives will be incomplete what does he say what does he say through this novel he uh, stresses the deep need for modern men and women to face all the elements in their natures in their behavior or mind for what if they were to live if they want to live if they want to lead if want to lead not a frustrated and incomplete life if they want their lives to be happy and complete they have to face all the challenges which our conscious and unconscious mind offer to us we have to face them boldly we have to surmount them then only we can have a complete and happy life that is what he says through his most famous novel lady chatterley's lover which was published in the year 1928 let us examine the features or characteristics of dh lawrence's writing lawrence is an original novelist he is quite original in his writing he never borrows ideas or ideology from others he is quite original by himself he made a remarkable contribution to the development of english novel yes he has made a remarkable great contribution to the development of english novel he altered altered means changed he altered or changed the dimensions of english novel or the directions of english novel and revealed its hidden possibilities dh lawrence changed the very dimensions of english novel and revealed its hidden possibilities to dh lawrence realism was primarily objectionable he was against realism because realism gave its support to the sterility of materialism commercialism and nationalism so to dh lawrence realism was primarily fundamentally objectionable 
because the support it gave to the sterility realism gave its support to sterility paralysis paralysis or sterility of contemporary materialism commercialism and nationalism you know the contemporary materialism commercialism and nationalism uh, were viewed as a sterile in the uh, realistic writing so he was against realism realism, realism was primarily objectionable because the support it gave it to the sterility of contemporary materialism commercialism and uh, nationalism Lawrence felt that he thought that the mode of realistic fiction was entirely inadequate for the effective expression of his interpretations of life D. H. Lawrence thought or felt that the mode of the style of realistic fiction a realistic writing of uh, stories and novels that is a realistic fiction why did he think he thought that or he felt that the style of or the mode of realistic uh, fiction was entirely inadequate it was entirely insufficient for the effective expression of his interpretations his interpretations or meanings of life he found that he discovered that realism was not uh, effective uh, not adequate to express his meanings of life his interpretations of life so he took uh, the task of devising a language of his own he took uh, he, he took uh, uh, dh lorenz took a, a difficult task of devising or making devising a language of his own twits or he took a difficult task of devising or making a language of his own in which the unconscious could be expressed the unconscious feelings and thoughts which occur in the unconscious realms of human minds could be expressed properly for that he devised a new language system a very beautiful narrative technique he devised so uh, he devised a language in which the unconscious could be expressed lawrence's novels had a abiding autobiographical interest another feature of his novels was that his novels had an abiding strong autobiographical autobiographical interest his novels were full of autobiographical elements sons and lovers is an autobiographical from start to finish the novel sons and lovers is quite autobiographical from beginning to end or from start to finish sex occupies the most important place in lawrence's novels so i think that this is highly motivating for you to read dh lawrence's novels especially like the rainbow and lady chatterley's lover why because sex occupies the most important place in lawrence's novels he discards he avoids he neglects victorian purity and inhibitions you know victorian period is a purity victorian is most of the victorians regarded unhealthy relationships between man and woman as something impure something very obscene and something unholy he discarded it dh lawrence avoided such things he Uh, considered the mass mere fantasies so he discards he rejects the victorian purity purity which existed during the victorian age victorian purity and inhibitions in the treatment of sex and uh, presence an original imaginative and modern view of love and sex through his novels so what does he do as uh, he presents sex and love in an imaginative he had an imaginative uh, modern view of love and sex in his novels 
he discards the Victorian purity and inhibitions, mental inhibitions, mental hesitations, hesitations. So we cannot often uh, open our heart to another, especially belonging to opposite sex, because of mental inhibitions. So he, uh, these things existed during the Victorian age. But he discards, uh, DHL Lawrence uh, rejects all these Victorian purity and uh, mental inhibitions uh, uh, in the treatment of sex and presence and origin. He presents through his novels an uh, original imaginative and uh, modern view of love and sex. Lawrence's style is poetical and symbolical. His style is, his mode of writing is Poetical as well as symbolical. He abundantly, he abundantly, he lavishly, D.H. Lawrence abundantly uses similes and metaphors. D.H. Lawrence abundantly, lavishly, largely uses similes and metaphors. His descriptions of natural scenery. And in his novels and stories, we can see very beautiful descriptions of a natural scenery. His descriptions of the natural scenery are picturesque and poetic. Our, our is descriptions of natural scenery. His descriptions of natural scenery are picturesque, romantic and uh, quite poetic. So this is about D.H. Lawrence. Study the lives, the lives and works of these two great writers and uh, feel safe. Thank you.